Hello everyone. Welcome to Power Electronics lecture series. In today's video, we are going to take a look at the block diagram of a power electronic system. In our previous video, we saw what power electronics is associated with and what power electronic circuits are. But being power electronic engineers, we need to understand what power electronic system is all about. For that, let us consider step by step analysis of this particular block diagram. Any power electronic system will basically have a source. And when we talk about source, it can be either AC or DC. And for example, if you are considering it to be equal to a DC source over here, this DC needs to be converted to AC. If that is the requirement, then we need a power electronic converter circuit to do that. So the DC will be converted to AC with the help of a power electronic converter circuit. And in turn, we will be having AC output at this point in time. So the load can be anything with respect to AC. It can be a three phase induction motor, a single phase induction motor or a synchronous motor, depending upon the requirement. But fundamentally, it is identified, the output parameters is usually identified with the help of voltage and current. Now let us assume we have an induction motor load. And usually with respect to motor loads, three important parameters are the power rating, the current rating, as well as the speed in which the motor is designed to operate for. Or you can also refer to it as the rated speed. For example, in this case, let us say the load it is designed for 20 amps and for some reason there is some deviation in this particular load and the current decreases to 18 amps or the current supplied from the power electronic converter circuit is decreased to 18 amps for some reasons. Just let us assume it. So in that case, what we will be doing is we will be comparing the load current that is drawn and we will be comparing the current that is supplied by the power electronic converter circuit through a help of a sensor. The sensor can be any type depending upon the parameter that you are actually comparing. In this case, it will be a current sensor. It can be a voltage sensor. It can be a speed sensor. What this sensor does, it will sense this particular quantity and converts it into a proportional electrical signal. And this in turn will be given to the control circuit. Control circuit is basically the brain of the entire block diagram. So it will decide as what should be given as the input to the power electronic converter circuit. How does that do so? We will be having a reference value set. For example, if we want the load to operate only at 20 amperes, then if there is any deviation, say there was a deviation of 18 amps previously, that will be compared because we have taken the feedback signals with the help of a sensor and this will be compared with a reference value of 20 amperes and the difference will be identified and it will be given as the gating pulses to the power electronic converter circuit in this particular fashion. And based on that, the power electronic converter circuit will change its voltage or current depending upon the parameter that we have actually sensed. One important thing that you need to remember here is, as I mentioned in my previous video, electronic circuits are associated with smaller power ratings or voltage ratings or current ratings, isn't it? So for example, control circuit is basically an electronic circuit which will be operating in milliampheres or microampheres or maximum up to amperes. But power electronic converter circuits will be operating at kiloampheres or larger amount of amperes in hundreds. So it is necessary to isolate the ground between the control circuit and the power electronic converter circuit. For that, we need an isolation block. So the isolator basically isolates the control circuit and the power electronic converter circuit. And in some cases, we may also need an amplifier to amplify the signals. For example, 
as i mentioned the control circuit will be having uh, micro amperes or milli amperes of current and this needs to be amplified and that is why we will be requiring an amplifier block as well and that in turn will be given to the input of a power electronic converter circuit in most of the cases this isolation block will not be mentioned in the block diagram but it is understood this is the block diagram of power electronic system i hope this topic is clear and you were able to understand it in a better way if you like this video please do like it share it and subscribe to our channel for regular updates thanks for watching stay tuned